Um, it's been a while. Mm -hmm. It was last year. That's all I can remember. I don't know the exact month, mm -hmm. but I know it's about a year, like last yeah, year. Yeah, it was. Yeah, actually, like, let's see. Last yeah. year in March, yeah. we did a re-recording, <laughs> and then the first time was almost. Was, was, it, like was it almost a whole year before that, or at least uh, half a year before that? Yeah, it was like, like it was last Large year. Large spaces. Yeah, it was like last year and like a couple months before last year. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So. Um, well, I knew there were some that I had to use definitely because because they were so popular and people often referred to them. So I knew the one on love, and I knew the one on children. I had to use that, and the one on marriage. I know a lot of people still quote that one in their marriage vows. So I knew those I really had to put in there, I, and it was no problem. I love those too. Mostly then, the rest, it was all about trying to think of ways that these poems, that the subject matter would come up organically within the story and make sense so that it wasn't just coming out of left field. Um, when Gibraltar wrote his book, he didn't worry about a, you know, a story progression of why people were asking. It's just he came upon this person, he came upon this person, and, and that was his uh, conceit. Mm -hmm. um, so really it was just mostly trying to figure out how would these people... I came up with the concept first that, like the book, it's going to be him in the morning, he learns of his ship, and then he, at the end he makes his journey to the mm -hmm. ship, and that's what's in between. That's about all the book story is, so I had a lot of license to expand from there. Mm -hmm. Uh, so then I was imagining, okay, if the breadth of the story is this one day's journey, who along the way and why would he run into in order to talk about this subject matter? So that's kind of what made me decide which ones. Uh, and I knew I'd end with death. Uh, mainly because if you really read Jabron's uh, words at the end, it, he's not just talking about going away on a boat. Oh, I have to say that uh, the producers who were on before me um, had wanted had, had come up with, with this idea of appealing to different animators to, in their own styles to uh, illustrate these these poems, interpret these poems. So that was in place. Uh, not everyone was in place, but the concept of it was. They had reached out to a lot of uh, different artists around the world and said, "Would you be interested?" Uh, so some people already had said yes, they would like to do it. Uh, and when I came on, more we added more as well. Is Sometimes I had to ask them to change their poems because the poems that they had thought they'd like to do didn't wind up in my narrative. So uh, a couple of them I had to say, hmm, we're not going to do that one. Do you mind doing another one? Uh, well, except for the two that were turned into songs, uh, all the poems plus the, the framing story were all done by Gabrielle Yared, our score composer. And um, I went to Paris and met with him, and we walked through the movie, you know, sat through the movie and talked about each piece and what was intended and what possibilities for it, because he had a chance to kind of think about it as well. Because each poem does require a slightly different treatment, because they're such different styles. And he found very different ways of, of doing music. You know, one was sort of jazzy, and the other one would, uh, was much more... Uh, Ethnic, you know, he brought a lot of the sounds of Lebanon uh, instruments into another one. Um, so he would find different ways of interpreting each of the poems, and, and he would play me like a little rough, a little rough piece. I remember he would, we'd sit there on his keyboard, he'd play me little motifs, and uh, we'd talk about that. Um, in terms, and I don't, God, we were lucky to get Gabriel because talk about hits, he has such sensitivity, that he could produce. Such emotional music. The the main themes, you know, the main theme of, of, of Mustafa and of the mother and daughter, were so strong. Um, and then again, like in that theme, uh, Yo-Yo Ma, uh, Salma had met Yo-Yo Ma and talked about this project, and he was a big fan of the book. And even though he was quite booked up and promised elsewhere, he made time to come in and, and record his cello solos for that. Uh, I mean, really, they were like gifts, really. Um, and then um, Salma knew uh, Damien Rice, 
who did uh, the children's song. And he is a really freewheeling spirit. Uh, and, and he was quite busy. He was on tour. So he had almost no time. But she asked him if he'd do it. And he said yes. And he didn't get back to her. And she said, Damien, we really need the song. He said, oh, all right, let me call you back in an hour. <laughs> Come up with a song. And he played it for her over the phone. And she loved it. And, and uh, she said, that's great. Did you record it? Went, no. And she said, record it before you forget it. You know? <laughs> So um, it's just it's just amazing, and then uh, Glenn Hansard, who did uh, love. Oh yes, of course he did once. Uh, who did the poem uh, for love? He started off uh, writing the song, and then he got busy with his schedule. And uh, Lisa Hannigan came in and worked with him, and they worked together and created, I think, that beautiful song. But also uh, Salma had known uh, Glenn from another association. Actually, she had known. Lisa, because Lisa was originally Damien Rice's girlfriend, so there's all these <laughs> interesting <laughs> triangles, musical love triangles going on. Uh, but, you know, all these people uh, were very generous. His voice is so... Is, I know. Right, Aslan. No, his voice is... Uh, I, one of the things I loved about it, it could have a gentleness to it, because I really wanted this guy to feel very warm and accessible and very human. But at the same time, it has such a, uh, a depth to it. And he was so familiar with these poems. When he came in, we had two days recording with him. One day to do all the dialogue, and the next day to do all the poems. That's a lot, because he's in practically every scene. And the poems are sizable. Uh, but he was so prepared. And what a gorgeous voice. Uh, he did about four different versions of each poem. And each one was, was gorgeous. Uh, he has such a great way with poetry, but then I think that's kind of the, the Irish soul there, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, no, a fantastic way. I think he should do recorded volumes of poetry, I think. Yeah. I think he'd be great. I'd, I'd listen to his books. Yeah, no, there had been no discussion about that in the beginning. As a matter of fact, you know, as the characters developed, uh, <laughs> well, as the characters developed, the character of Camilla and the character uh, of Almitra resembled more and more uh, Salma and, and her daughter. Uh, and it was Salma's idea, it was her suggestion, to have a child character in the story. Uh, I had, the, the character of Almitra was originally uh, the mother character, and uh, Salma was thinking that if we had a child character and a child's point of view, it would also help children, the audience of children, to help travel through the story as well, mm -hmm. which was a really, really good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, but as we were developing the story and developing the art, uh, the two uh, Brizzi brothers, Paul and Gaetan Brizzi, were helping me develop the look of the picture. And their first drawings right out of the box looked like Salon. And we just loved it so much. And the more we developed it, it became really obvious that she had to do the voice of the mother. and. Uh, I mean, I think she brings so much to the role. Uh, I find there's a lot of humor in her voice. You were, you were just, we were just talking about that outside because she's so lively, and and her accent, and she's just so animated herself. Uh, there's just a lot of appeal there. But also, I think she brought so much of an emotional depth to the mother-daughter story, and I think she was certainly pulling upon her own experience as a mother. We can go first. Go. Um, <laughs> she's sweet. She's goofy, and like sometimes she doesn't mean to be funny, but she's <laughs> funny, and like she'll be like, "Why are you laughing?" And just like, I'm, and you're just laughing, and you just don't know why you're laughing, but it's some way funny. Yeah. And like her accent puts everything in a good mood. Like, there's no being sad or mad around her because she's always happy and. She's always goofing around and making you laugh. She is so dynamic. I, this is a woman who, when she puts her mind to something, and boy, does she have focus. She makes things happen. I mean, uh, there's another way of talking about that, of manifesting things, you know. She really brings things out of her mind and puts them in the world. And she pulls people together and she makes things happen. It's just like in the hallway. She goes, what? The dress? Oh, we're going to make this happen. She, you know, <laughs> is someone who makes things happen. And she has such a big heart. 
that that also draws people in. Uh, so many people on this project who who contributed, you know, so many of the musicians and artists, myself, I think we're all attracted, for one thing, for our love of Gibran, but also you could feel the love in the project already, this sort of open heart. Uh, so that, I think, is such a strong power that really helped this little film get put together. Um, both. Uh, we s well, when I first, when Selma fir first said she had a movie in mind for me, uh, and we went to see the whole like story bases and all mm -hmm. the drawings, which were very incredible. I love them. Um, it, we saw that, and we kind of saw what the story was about, um, and we kind of saw it, and we decided to do it. And when we were doing the voiceovers, some of the clips came up while we were doing it. Um, and it looked amazing, and all the drawing and all the anime itself was just amazing. So we kind of saw little bits and pieces of it, but we never saw like the whole movie mm -hmm. done itself. So it's weird because you're like sitting at the microphone doing like squawk noises and then you're, like <laughs> sitting there doing just like which what type of squawk do you want me to do? So it's a little weird, but. It was very fun to do, but in an anime, it was kind of something that you have to see through the characters as well. So you have to try and make you, your lips kind of go with the anime and how she's doing it, and how she's like squawk, like you know. <laughs> so it's different ways you have to kind of show your voice through the characters. When I first heard the poems was when I saw the movie actually because I didn't read the book okay. which was very surprising um, but I heard the poems and I saw how they actually like turned the poems into like anime as well and like showed the anime and the poetry all in one and I kind of found that very cool and like all the colors uh, and it was just very beautiful and I liked all of it it was just something that kind of catch my attention and made me listen to the poems as well. And I loved all the poems that were in the film. Well, it's her spirit, you know? <laughs> her spirit, her spunky spirit. Now, I can imagine her climbing up on rooftops you know, with her seagull friend and, <laughs> and running up the streets and, you know, and there's a, there's a good backbone there, a feisty spirit and, and someone who, you know, also has an emotional depth. Mm -hmm. The only thing that worries me in the beginning of, of school is when new students come and kids from fourth grade come to fifth grade and like they notice me in the beginning of the school year and like transfer them to different classes and I'm not really worried about it and then I see them like waving like crazy and they're like hi it's her it's her and it's it's different and weird at the same time because I'm not really thinking about that at school so when I'm like in like at the couple of few weeks in school and I'm like trying to get together and go to the next class and they're just like waving I'm like oh wait it's me and I'm just like <laughs> try to get myself together but it's not like everything's like based on who I really am like everything's based on my real personality and not just who I am in movies and, and getting awards and stuff like that it's like who I am and through all the fifth graders that were there that came, they're all my friends. Like, it's not that I'm Quivenge Nate Wallace, Annie Beast, all, all those movies. It's just Quivenge Nate Wallace, the girl that's at my school. Yeah. So. I don't even know. Um, it, when I first went to my first actual school after doing the movie, it wasn't as everyone was changing around me. It was just like, after like the next day after I came from a trip or when I first came from the movie, they were like, oh, how was the movie? Was it fun? And I was like, yeah, you know, just like, mm. and the next day, I just walked past them. They didn't stop me to ask more questions. It wasn't like they would keep going on and on about the movie. It was just after I come from a trip, they want to know where I came from, what I did, and all that. And they just get their information that day and just leave it alone the next. So it's something very exciting for <laughs> um.